Good afternoon, everyone. This is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. Uh, tonight, I'm just doing a quick video, probably about 10 minutes, um, to show you guys how to use design elements. Now, I thought that this was kind of straightforward, but several of you have mentioned that you just don't know what to do with design elements, and it's one of the reasons why you don't buy them or download them when you see them as freebies. Um, design elements, ref the term, refers to anything from digital paper to swatches to SVGs to clip art, uh, basically anything that you could use to create your own design. Now, the basics of sublimation really come down to layering and piecing together different elements to create that finished design product. So it's not just about taking a clip art and adding text to it. It's about actually incorporating, um, you know, frames and digital papers and anything that you want to create a completely unique design that's all your own using items that someone else might have created. When it comes to different design elements, it's very important to pay attention to the terms of use that are put forth by the original designer. Now, if you happen to download any of the ones from my shop, uh, my terms of use are very simple and straightforward. There's no added cost to use my design elements for digital designs, and it has to be labeled a design element in order to be used for a digital design that you intend to sell. Um, there is no, uh, no real restrictions. The only thing is that you have to incorporate at least 25% of your own elements uh, or designs, whatever it is, uh, your own pieces to make it your own in or before you can sell that completed item. So every designer is different. Some do have additional fees for commercial use or to be able to use it to sell digital designs. So just make sure you pay attention to those. Ask the designers questions if you have them. Now for me in my shop, again, everything is included, just makes it a lot easier and I don't have to babysit people. Um, I highly recommend getting the design membership for my shop if you don't have it already. The design membership is a one-time fee that gives you a special member code, which is good for an entire year from when you receive your code. And uh, with this code, you enter it at checkout and it brings your total on all digital designs and graphic elements and everything else like that that's on my shop to zero dollars. So you pay the one time fee, you get access to everything that's on my shop. You don't have to worry about not being able to access those files down the road because they're always available indefinitely on your account that's on my website. And my website is www.ofloveandshiplap.us. Um, and you also get exclusive designs and bonuses every single month just for having a membership that are not available to people to purchase who don't have memberships. So one of those is this little gnome that I'm going to use in today's, uh, demo. So this little gnome was part of a trio that a trio that I did after our tutorial in affinity designer on how to create your own gnome. And now I'm going to use him to show you guys how to make your own designs. So let's say that you had downloaded this. Um, you could start with something really simple, like just creating frames that incorporate this gnome that people or yourself can add their own text in. Um, so frames for digital design are a really, a really great tool to use to, to create um, because it just kind of opens up that creativity door for people to add their own items and um, make it their own for their physical goods that they are selling. So we'll start by clicking on our, oops. we'll start by clicking on our rectangle tool and we're just gonna make a rectangle. I know, so exciting. I've made sure that I have no fill on my rectangle and I like this purple outline. I think it works well for Halloween with the orange and the black. So all I want to do is click on my gnome in the layers panel and drag him to the top so he's on the top of our frame. And now I'm going to go ahead and change up the stroke on our rectangle so that it has just a more fun look. If you happen to see the video last week on how to create your own swatches, which I'm also going to use that this in this tutorial as well. 
Um, if you saw that, you know that one of my favorite purchased brush strokes is the chunky markers off of the affinity.serif.com website. So whenever you create a shape, if you want to apply that uh, to the outline, you'll click on your stroke tab and you'll select the style and you'll select the brush, or I think it says textured line style. And then you'll select brushes and you can just pick one of your chunky marker brushes. So when I do that, you see it gives this, this fun texture, which is very on trend right now. So I'm going to tilt it a little bit too, because that's also on trend. I'm going to make another one because it's just fun to have two. <laughs> so I hit duplicate. I'm going to flip this one so that it looks opposite of that. I'm actually going to choose a different marker as well. Uh, let's see. All right, I like that one. And then we'll go ahead and change that color. Maybe green. Green's very Halloween-y. There we go. And I think maybe just make it a little bit thicker. There. So now we've got the basics for a frame um, that we can use for our own designs. So if you want, and I mean, as you thought, that was so simple and easy. Um, my rules so you have to incorporate 25% of your own. So this wouldn't be quite enough as far as I'm concerned. Just adding these is not enough for this to constitute a, something you could sell as a digital graphic. But you could go ahead and add in, um, you know, some more clip art elements. Uh, I have a bunting here. I haven't released these in my shop, but if you had created your own or got one from a different shop, you could also, you could incorporate that. And then this would be considered a completed design. We can even make our gnome a little smaller. There we go. So if you had incorporated these squares that you drew, if you had gotten this bunting from a different shop than mine and incorporated it with the gnome, you would now have um, a base digital frame that you would be able to export and uh, sell as a digital graphic in your shop, um, since mine only requires 25%. But it is important to pay attention to what each designer requires because some have a 50%, some don't want their, um, their specific design element to be any kind of a main part of your design. When you export your designs, you're always going to export them as a flattened PNG. Anytime that you are using anything that you have licensed from any place, you have to export it as a flattened PNG. This is pretty much a universal rule because you uh, people should not be able to extract a specific element and use it as their own. They have to use it as the total piece. Uh, so let's say that you wanted to make your own completed design though. So you didn't just want to stop at this cute little frame, which I really like this and you'll find this in my shop after this video. We could do I love a good uh, a good gnome pun. I'm not even going to lie. So I'm going to add a little text. Not really sure about this font for this. <coughs> <coughs> oh, let's see. Well, this one's kind of fun. Kind of looks like a comic book font. Oops. I'm just looking for a font that'll work quickly here. All right, there we go. I really like this one for Halloween. This was a freebie last year, believe it or not. Um, maybe like Creative Fabrica had it. And you could even just make this two lines of text. Well, maybe not. I think it does look better as four lines of text.
So what we can do is maybe just shrink down our little banner, put it on a curve so it goes in the background like that. There we go. So that it's not too invasive on our text. And we can of course give our text an outline so that it will pop. Keep in mind that sublimation does not print white, but you, if you add a white outline to this, that will make it pop off of that banner so that it doesn't look like it blended in. And just like that, you have completed an, a design which you can turn around and sell. So this is pretty much the basics of how to use uh, digital design elements. Now, the one thing I didn't show you yet was digital paper. Um, so, you know, we have different clip arts and banners that I have, I have created, but you may have license from elsewhere. We've got text that we've added that you could add a pattern, color, whatever you want to that. We've got the, the square rectangles that we created. Um, and let's just say that we wanted to throw in a swatch. Oh, my swatch is already there. Um, so I showed you last week on how to create your own swatches. And then with that, you can also add a digital paper to that to give it a specific look. So I'm going to actually get rid of that little banner because it's not going to work for this little idea. I've clicked on my digital paper. It's all the way over here where it doesn't belong. So I'll drag that in so it's a little bit closer. And then I'm going to click and drag that underneath the name like I showed you last week. The name of our swatch. And I don't think I actually like this one. This one's got too much going on. Sorry, I know I zoomed way out because I was trying to see it. That digital paper is too much going on, but I do have another one. I just kind of imported some different things to play with. So I'm going to drag that underneath. There we go. And apply that to my swatch. And then if we took that text away, we have another, took that text away and maybe add a little glow to our, there we go, to our um, gnome so that he pops off of that frame. But now I think the swatch would look better above the frame. So we're just going to move that. There we go. Now we've created another background that you could sell as a digital back, a digital file so that people could add their own text because based on my requirements, you've added enough of your own stuff to make this your own. And then of course, if we wanted to add text, uh, oops, we'll click on that trigger treating. I mean, you could add whatever you want, obviously I'm just, doing this on the fly. So we'll put boo, kind of put it at an angle and then do another one. And just like that, we've created another digital design that would actually be pretty cute on um, a children's shirt. So this is just to give you some different ideas. And of course, once you get kind of your base set, so that would be um, this without the text, you can then change out that digital paper very easily that's in that swatch and create different frames. You can add different, different phrases um, and change out that text. And before you know it, you'll have a whole set of designs that you use design elements for, and you didn't have to learn how to draw everything from scratch or worry about having that artistic ability. Um, so this is what design elements are used for. They're designed to be incorporated into the different types of digital designs or, you know, designs that you want to make for your physical products to list in your shop. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night and thanks for joining us.